All of us here, of course, have or we have had mothers. And all of us here, hopefully, have been blessed with the great example of faith and love, the gifts that our mothers have given to us. Many of you here are mothers. And each day you live out that magnificent call from God that you have to live and to share that love with your children, a love that is strong, a love that is long-suffering, a love that endures all things. For the heart of a mother is arguably the most extraordinary expression of love in our human experience. We gather today in this year as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of our Blessed Mother at Fatima, Portugal, and we will consecrate ourselves to her. And as we do that in this Mass, we reflect upon her heart, a heart that was perfectly joined to the heart of her son, a heart that loved God as only his mother could and a heart that loves each and every one of us, we who have been given to her as her children. 100 years ago, Mary appeared to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal over a period of six months. And those apparitions, the messages that Mary gave to those children were consistent. To pray. To pray for the conversion of sinners to pray for an end to communism that was the great scourge of the 20th century, to pray the rosary every day for peace in the world. And amidst all those messages, the most pronounced message was the gentle care and love she showed to those children continuously each time and which she continuously shows to us our gospel today is taken from chapter 19 of the Gospel of St. John. We know the scene. We are at Calvary. We are witnessing the last moments of Jesus' earthly life. And he is about to accomplish all that the Father has called him to do. And now we hear the last words recorded in the Gospels, which he addresses to his mother. And he says, woman, behold your son. This designation of woman can seem a little bit impersonal in our modern idiom, but it's anything but that. It is this most referential title given to this woman, reserved to her who singularly had this unique role in salvation history. In our first reading, we heard from chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, the fall of man and woman. It's what tradition calls the proto-evangelium or the first gospel after that first sin, the Lord God says that he will put enmity between the woman and Satan and between her offspring and his and that her offspring will strike at the head of the serpent. This is the promise that comes through Mary's offspring, Jesus Christ, in his ultimate victory over sin and suffering and death. Mary, who is uniquely associated with this role of salvation, is able to withstand all the temptations of the evil one. She is always sinless because her heart is perfect and pure. There is no selfishness. There is no anger. There is no lust or envy. There is only love. Because love that is pure is the barrier through which Satan can never break through. This account in today's gospel is the second time in John's gospel he calls his mother woman. The first is when his public ministry has begun, begun in the first great miracle at Cana. Her heart, Mary's heart, is moved with pity for that couple in that great celebration as they have run out of wine. And it prompts her to ask her son to intervene on their behalf. At that point, Jesus says, 
Woman, what concern is that is yours of mine? For my hour has not yet come. But Mary confidently trusts. And she declares to those servers at that wedding, do whatever he tells you. And that's what she still says to us, what she said to the children of Fatima. For she knows it is only in him, in doing what he tells us, he who is her son and our Savior and our Lord, that the satisfaction of all the desires of every human heart can be found. And so after our general intercessions today, we will consecrate ourselves, the parish, to our Blessed Mother. We seek to have our hearts more conformed to her heart so that it can be ultimately more conformed to the sacred heart of her son. We seek to place in her hands the use and the merits of all of our prayers and all of our good actions and all of our penances knowing that she will use them perfectly to further her son's will. We seek to do as she did, to trust God totally in all things. And we seek, as Mary always did, to accept whatever comes to us in our lives, all of the joys that we hopefully will enjoy, and all the sufferings that will afflict us so harshly. Because Mary knows best of all that in all things, even as she gazes upon her crucified son, all things are mysteriously part of the infinitely wise and generous plan of God. As Jesus accomplishes his Father's will on the cross, in that excruciating torment of his crucifixion, in that one perfect sacrifice that is made present for us every time we gather to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, he entrusts Mary to John and through him to all of us. And we are told that from that hour, John took her into his home so now we gather to entrust ourselves to Mary. May we now do as John did, taking Mary into the home of our hearts so that there she and her son will rest, filling us now and always with what was called for and promised by Our Lady to the children at Fatima, that grace of conversion and the gift of God's peace.